All right, Pastor Michael, we're going to continue on with our questions on Roman Catholicism. And this next one is, why do Catholics believe in transubstantiation? So before you answer that, let's go ahead and define what transubstantiation is. In Roman Catholicism, uh, transubstantiation, big word, but during the celebration of the mass, it's a change in the elements, if you will, the the bread and the wine, uh, where they change in substance, but not appearance. So on the appearance, on the surface of things, it's still just bread and wine. Mm -hmm. Um, But what they do is they change into Christ's real presence. Um, The bread becomes his body and the blood becomes his wine. And it's more on like a metaphysical level, if you will. But Mm -hmm. so when you are partaking of communion, um, their belief is that even though like what you're actually eating is bread and drinking is wine, um, you're you're actually consuming the literal body Mm -hmm. and the blood of of Jesus. And in Roman Catholicism, they often refer to communion as the Eucharist, which is one of the sacraments that we have been talking through in this series as well. Yep, it comes from a a word, Eucharisto, which means to give thanks. And Mm. so it's, uh, even though when they partake of communion, it's often fairly solemn. Mm -hmm. By definition, it's supposed to be a solemn celebration. And uh, in in it, you are participating and it's, it's sort of the most, um, unified, intimate moment you can have with Christ where he is in you and you consume his literal body and blood mm-hmm. and it sanctifies you. It, it is a time of union with him. And then it's also a time of, of for Roman Catholics, corporate union with mm-hmm. him where we all together are partaking of the of the body and blood. It's foreign to Protestants yeah. because um, we, we emphasize what Jesus said he, when he says, do this in remembrance of me that sure. the point of doing it is to remember um, what he did on the cross. Mm-hmm. And we have the same means. We have the bread, yep. we have the cup, but the actual transubstantiation process yeah. is something that's unique to the Roman Catholic belief. Yeah, it comes from um, the Gospels. Uh, here's one version. This is Mark 14, 22. Jesus is celebrating the Last Supper, and he says, this is what Mark says, as they were eating, he took bread. After blessing it, he broke it, he gave it to them, and he said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for for many. So... The Roman Catholics have read this and and said, look, he said, it's his body. We take it literally. And Bible interpretation 101, we take things literarily, right? Right. <clears throat> so this, this is a metaphor, clearly a metaphor. There is no concept in the Passover meal, uh, which is what he's actually celebrating. This is the Jewish mm-hmm. Passover meal where they celebrated the Passover of um, Israel being mm-hmm. freed from the Egyptian slavery and... Um, and, and that was a, a metaphor, if it was a type or shadow pointing to Jesus freeing us from sure. our sins, yeah. our metaphorical Egypt, our literal sins. And so there was nothing in the Passover meal where there was ever any kind of substantive transubstantiation mm-hmm. change in any of the elements. They were all symbolic. Mm. And so when Jesus says this, he is actually um, very much playing off the tradition of a regular Seder meal where every single element of the meal had a deeply symbolic right. a metaphorical representative, representative yeah. meaning. Um, so when the Roman Catholic Church over time, uh, by, by, by about the 12th century mm-hmm. is when they really identify the word transubstantiation, you see glimpses of, of communion for the first thousand years of the church or the Eucharist um, being um, somewhat mystical, if you will. Yeah. Um, but that I, there's just I mean, I'm having a hard time interpreting in light of Jesus being in a Seder meal taking all these metaphorical representative elements and then saying things like this. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this represents my body. Mm-hmm. You know, that's yeah. clearly what's going on here. Yeah. But Roman Catholics don't believe that. And uh, they believe, no, um, this is literal. And there's, he must have, again, Jesus is the king of metaphor, allegory, and analogy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, it's just, um, it, to me, this is such a big whiff. Yeah. Um, but I also know that they're not intending to whiff. Sure. Uh, like, no... No Roman Catholic is probably doubting that because for many of them, that's like the only interpretation they've ever heard. Right. In fact, when we have a lot of ex-Roman Catholics mm-hmm. at Village Church. And so when they partake of communion, there's this funny little thing that happens in many, which is like, ooh, like this has always been the most sacred part yeah. of my week. It feels casual. It feels yes. almost kind of like. Are, is this right? Is Disrespectful this, yeah, even yeah. at times, mm-hmm. even though we celebrate it most every yeah. week, we do take a time of reflection and repentance. And, um, but there, 
what we do in remembrance nowhere near has the spiritual depth and significance mm. that the Roman Catholic Church yeah. assigns to it. I think the reason we have a difference is some with baptism. Like they, they'll teach that baptism removes original sin, and we're like, no, we're doing this as an outward sign of inward right. reality. Yeah. So Protestants are known for that that lingo, outside uh, external symbol, inward reality. Sure. And Catholics typically take these external symbols and give them unbelievably extra biblical, powerful. Mm. Um, yeah, power. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's get back to that. Why? So we okay. went into the Bible. We talked about how they could be interpreting what Jesus says as literal, mm -hmm. not literarily. Yeah, good. Did one. I say yeah. that right? You got it. Um, but now let's get into the Roman Catholic Catechism itself yep. as it goes into the um, actual definitions yep. of transubstantiation and what that means. So I'm going to read um, section 1376. The Council of Trent summarizes the Catholic faith by declaring. Because Christ, our Redeemer, said that it was truly his body that he was offering under the species of bread, it has always been the conviction of the Church of God and this Holy Council now declares again that by the consecration of the bread and wine, there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ, our Lord, and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of his blood. This change, the Holy Catholic Church has fittingly and properly called transubstantiation. So it's yep. literally right there in black yep. and white. The this is what happens. is transforming mm -hmm. transubstantiation. Yep. Yeah. 1413, um, the catechism writes, by the consecration, the transubstantiation of the bread and wine of the body of Christ is brought about. Mm -hmm. And basically the consecration happens by the priest and the mass. And so when he does this, there's the real substantive mm -hmm. it's a moment in time yes. that it mm -hmm. actually changes over and goes through yeah. that which is interesting it's why um the you'll often see the catholic priest will drink all of the extra wine mm. it's not because he's a lush <laughs> it's because it's it's sacred Take and it's his the, responsibility yeah, absolutely, yeah. when i was a kid in catholic school um, we would make the bread for communion and we were allowed to eat it before it was consecrated but after it was consecrated very different rules yeah, as, absolutely. You can, as you can imagine mm -hmm. yeah Yep. So uh, Catholics believe that by receiving the Eucharist, mm -hmm. they are communing directly yep. with Jesus. Um, they are encouraged to receive the Eucharist on a regular basis as yep. part of that sacramental yep. gospel, yep. Um, part of their being a part of the church, being mm -hmm. confirmed into the church. So what exactly happens mm -hmm. during Holy Communion, as they call it in the Roman Catholic Church? That's tricky. Okay. So Here's what we, I think we know that we know. Mm. So if you're talking to like a common, like normal Roman Catholic, um, there's, you're not always aware, maybe like you don't have vocabulary, mm. right? You know, experientially, like I've never been closer. You know, it's important to God. Uh, you know, God wants you to do it. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel more connected to God. And I, I think what they understand is that um, it's important. It's important for my sanctification. It's important for my relationship with God. It changes me in the process. It's a... Um, part of Roman Catholicism, it has this interesting um, dynamic that that the participation in physical things changes us, even if our heart doesn't hmm. isn't in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for the Protestant formation theology, if you will, um, for us, it's like, no, we do these things and we put our heart into it and consistency and our heart, like being all in kind of like begins yeah. to change us. For them, it's like um, no baptism, for example. It literally saves you. It doesn't matter where your heart is in it. Mm -hmm. it you could be a baby, whatever. Like, like this actual physical act does something to mm -hmm. you no matter what, every time, period, whether you want it to or not, you know? Mm -hmm. So for the Roman Catholics, the, part, the physical participation of communion has um, um, uh, deepens the relationship with God, deepens their intimacy, transforms them, changes them. It is almost equivalent. This is the best way I could say it. The way Protestants think about engaging the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Like, we're, like we're like you got to be in the Word, you got to be studying the Word. The Word changes you. The Bible, yeah. it's God changes you through it. That's a similar way to how Catholics um, perceive communion. Mm -hmm. So it is the means. It's the most immediate, effective, regular means of yeah. growth. And to Catholics' credit, over the last thirty years, they've realized that the Protestants are kind of kicking their butt in the Bible study side. <laughs> so they've been really doubling down on that. Yeah. So I want to give them credit. Mm -hmm. That is elevating in importance personal Bible study. Yeah. Well, and as we've talked in other episodes of this, you know, kind of series within Q&A, um, the, the merit mm -hmm. that you can earn yeah. over the course of participating in the Eucharist, mm -hmm. going through holy baptism, all yeah. of that type of thing, 
continues to bring people back into that moment oh, yeah. and drawing that closeness with Christ and thinking to yourself, okay, well, if I do this, if I do this, yep. if I do this, then I'll go to heaven. Then I will earn my way yeah. and be able to get there. And that one of the challenging parts of, of the Eucharist is I know that it affects my eternity. I don't know how, right. I, you know what I mean? But I just know it's important. I know I need to do it right. in order to land in the place that I want to yep. at the end. Yep, it definitely makes the whole process better and shorter. Mm -hmm. You know, so anyway, yeah. that's the purgatory process. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, coming back to our original question, you know, why they believe in transubstantiation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they take the literal yep. uh, meaning from the Bible. They have it in their catechism. You know, what would you say in response with the pure and simple gospel mm. in response to this? I, I would just look at somebody and say the Bible explicitly over and over again teaches uh, salvation is not by sacrament. It does not teach, it does not have a category for a sacramental, like the sacraments are going to have this metaphysical change mm -hmm. inside of your soul. You know, like yeah. it, the Bible just doesn't speak in these terms. Yeah. And I think when we just get to a pure biblical Christianity, um, we, we don't really have permission to go this route. Mm -hmm. And what we see is that communion or the Eucharist is actually essentially about remembering and centering our hearts and minds that our salvation is all of Christ. It is from Christ. Um, and, and, and so that that's actually challenging because when you're a Roman Catholic, you're like, yeah, it's of Christ, but now I got to do my part. You know, right. it, it kind of breaks the essential oomph and meaning of what communion was intended to be. And then it makes it ultimately about something it's not and it makes it about the elements and it's like no this is about my soul before god mm -hmm. remembering what he's done and so i would pull back and just say the best thing we could tell a roman catholic is that if you get the traditions of the church out of the picture which are extra biblical teachings mm -hmm. and the magisterium the papal bishop yeah um, pro proclamations and you just look at pure biblical christianity the you're not going to have a lot of space for the roman catholic approach the Eucharist. I think that's actually freeing, by mm -hmm. the way, yeah. because everything you need is in Christ yeah. um, when you mm -hmm. trust in him and he gives you the Holy Spirit and these sacramental things that we do are not required um, in the same way. And so there's a lot of freedom from like, oh, did I do it? Oh, did I do it? Yeah. You know, like, oh, did I got to get back to communion. Frequently you know? enough. Did right. I take it right? Did I, right. you know, go to the right church, the right priest, the right, you know, there's process. a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Not all Catholics have it, but enough have it. There's a lot of anxiety around mm -hmm. sacraments and yeah. was it done right? And God, God, like forbid, if you're the Roman Catholic who gets baptized and that priest is disqualified and you have to wonder if your right. <laughs> baptism That's is disqualified, do do right? Again. These are real yeah. questions that, yeah. that happen. And, but we Protestants are able to kind of take all that out and we say it's Christ. Yeah. You know, if mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm baptized by somebody who proves later to not be a Christian, it, mm -hmm. it was never the person. It was always Christ. Yeah. So, well, thank God for the yeah. redeeming power of Jesus Christ yeah. alone, alone over yeah. all of our sins. So. Classic Protestant. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for going into yeah, that. My joy.